Badminton is a very popular sport around the world, from casual players in clubs and community centers to professional athletes in the Olympics. However, it is a tedious process to collect all the shuttlecock around the court, and even if you know how to pick up a birdie with a racket, it can potentially damage the racket. We notice there aren't any products in the market that can do this task efficiently. Therefore, the goal of our project is to help badminton players to retrieve shuttlecocks around the court with our design, all automatically. Our product is called BirdieBot, which is a badminton shuttlecock retrieving robot. To create BirdieBot, these are the talents we gathered and their respective contribution are shown. BirdieBot utilizes a camera and Raspberry Pi to detect the shuttlecock. If the shuttlecock is not isolated, a strong fan will blow away the shuttlecocks. If it is isolated, BirdieBot will determine if it is in the correct orientation. If it is not oriented correctly, a fan will adjust the shuttlecock. Once it is isolated in the correct orientation, BirdieBot will retrieve the shuttlecock using a vacuum system and store it for the user to collect. While designing BirdieBot, we consider the materials that we are using. To satisfy Cradle to Cradle certified categories such as material reutilization, we use secondhand parts and materials that can be recycled after prototyping. Most of our electrical components will be reused in the final prototype. The total cost of our proof of concept prototype is $400. We estimate that the final prototype will cost around $600. BirdieBot's base is made of plywood and it is supported by four plywood legs in each corner of the base. We printed the base and legs for BirdieBot using the laser printer from the SFU library. However, once we began assembling BirdieBot, we realized our base was too short. There was no support for the back of the vacuum. Ideally, we would have just printed a new, longer base that had more support for the back of the vacuum, but due to the current COVID-19 pandemic, we were unable to use these facilities. So, instead, we screwed metal strap ties to the edge of the base and used these to support the weight of the vacuum. We also added a wood block at the end of the strap ties to give the vacuum the proper angle to suck the shuttlecock in. Here's the vacuum system of BirdieBot. We utilize the vacuum system from a used handheld vacuum on BirdieBot to provide the suction it needs to retrieve a shuttlecock. We used the built-in battery during the testing phase, but the final vacuum system will be powered by external battery alongside with other circuit components. The storage system is attached at the end of the vacuum tube, which can be easily detached to empty the collected shuttlecocks. The vacuum tube of the POC is constructed with a Y-shaped PVC pipe, some cardboard, and a modified version of a regular shuttlecock container. Here is a demo showing the retrieval process with a vacuum system. For the isolation of the shuttlecocks, we decided to use a powerful motor to blow away all shuttlecocks in front of BirdieBot. We've 3D printed a fan for the motor and situated the motor on the side of BirdieBot. Through testing, we noticed that the air flows sideways. So, we redirected the fan to fit the airflow. We wanted to procure a new fan blade, but we were unable to due to COVID-19. The fan and motor are enclosed in PVC piping due to its sturdiness. As for the orientation of the shuttlecocks, we used a simple computer fan situated on top of the vacuum tube entrance. Through testing, our team realized that one fan was capable of accomplishing the orientation task. Next up, we have to determine the orientation of the shuttlecock. The left shows the original image, and the right shows the output of the algorithm we used to find the orientation, which is shown here by the red arrow. Here is a demonstration of the detection and reorientation of the shuttlecock as it is run on the Raspberry Pi. As the shuttlecock goes into the camera view, the green light turns on indicating that there is a shuttlecock detected. The fan turns on to reorient the shuttlecock, then the red light turns on at the end indicating that BirdieBot has to move. After testing each individual component, we were able to integrate everything together. The Pi is connected with the vacuum motor, the isolation blower, and the orientation blower via a relay circuit. This allows the Pi to send out signals to turn each and every component on and off. The camera is connected directly to the Pi 
and allows the mobile net SSD to obtain a live image to identify Sherlock Cox. The identification will then trigger a corresponding control signal to the different components in order to complete the task of retrieving the Sherlock Cox. After integration, the proof of concept of BirdieBot is completed. The team here at BirdieBot are eager to continue working and improving on the product to bring a new innovation into the badminton world.